I'll be talking about how to best use your coffee machine or espresso machine for new or beginners. The first one I like to explain is this rubber silicon rubber band here. Have you noticed that this rubber silicon rubber band is for you to lift up and down your frother? And it's supposed to protect your hand because the, the froth, the metal frother is hot. By default, the machine comes with a silicone rubber here. Uh, one of the good tips I would like to share is to move it here. Now, the reason why you like to move it there is because it makes it much easier for you to froth as such. You will notice that it's right there. So it kind of holds your pitcher in place compared to if you're doing it in metal. It, it tends to move around more, so it, that helps a lot. And if some people, they like to uh, hold a frother as such. When they're frothing their milk, that will increase stability and will give you a nice creamier frothing as well. And this level will actually show you whether you have moved your pitcher. For example, if you're doing it here, it's really hard to see whether you have moved or not. If you have placed it here, you can see like this is the third ring. If you have moved it down, it's quite noticeable. Yeah, so you can use the ring here to um, determine whether you have moved the picture up or down. Next up, I'd like to talk about the frothing knob. The frothing knob turns on and off like this. Now, if you notice that I've placed um, two stickers here, one here and one here. This is especially useful for new uh, people which is not very experienced baristas. Um, this shows you the exact location when you on and and when you off the frother. Again, it shows you when you on the frother, which is this point to this point, and when you off, which is here. This is useful because um, a lot of uh, new baristas they do not know when to off, so they therefore they tend to turn it a lot more. And that uh, actually uh, wastes a lot of time. Uh, as you know, time is really a uh, big constraint when you're making coffee, and especially when you have like 20, 30 people waiting in line in queue, um, and you have to make like 20, 30 cups in uh, a roll, and every second counts. And just by trying to figure out where the turning, where the on point is, it saves you like one or two seconds per cup, calculate out times. 10 or 20 cups, it comes out to quite a lot. So this is one of the tips to actually uh, write down or uh, indicate where is the on, where is the off. This is also useful because I've personally seen quite a number of uh, baristas accidentally leaving their frother on for hours on end, just like this. Because they, they do not know when the off point is. Therefore, having an off point, an on point, uh, will prevent accidents, uh, human error, as well as quite useful for if you are new in the line. Next up, I would like to talk about the portal filter. Portal filter has different locking point. For this, you have a 90 degrees locking point. It's roughly enough the degrees. Certain machines, locking point is slightly more towards the left. You get roughly about a 30 degrees more to the left rather than a straight 90 degrees angle. So remember not to overlock your portal filters. By overlocking your portal filters too much, you tend to wear off the gasket inside. By wearing off the gasket, then you need to change your gasket more frequently, and that is a cost for there as well. Next up, I'd like to talk about optimizing your water temperature before you actually put before you actually pull a espresso shot. Um, do bear in mind that the good temperature to pull an espresso is roughly about 85 to 90 degrees Celsius, and the water inside the head tends to overheat. So, if you like a really good cup of coffee. A good suggestion is to pour just empty water, let the 
you want to drain the water from the head for roughly two to three seconds out uh, to make sure that the water temperature is stabilized before you perform the espresso shot. This will give you a really, really good stabilized temperature at roughly about 85 to 90 rather than um, having an unstable heat because of the heat which tend to overheat your water if you don't have a TCI uh, double boiler or if you don't have a uh, constant coffee making for example if you have left the machine on for 2 hours, 3 hours, 4 hours whatever water is inside you tend to overheat and instead of getting 85 to 90 degrees you get roughly about 9500 or more next up I like to talk about uh, where to place your porta filters I would strongly suggest placing your porta filters in the group head itself and leave it there I've seen quite a number of uh, baristas leaving the porta filters everywhere that includes you know leaving the porta filters uh, on top here everywhere and the thing I like to highlight is that inside your porta filter generally you have a little bit of coffee powder and sometimes you have a little bit of water residual water inside and this leaves a lot of stains everywhere and it creates a lot of mess uh, sometimes if you're not careful the porta filter falls on the ground and it breaks or cracks so one the best bet is uh, to actually place a porta filter in the group head itself that's the safest place for you to place your porta filter. Again, try not to place the porta filter, you know, lying everywhere. Next up, I'd like to explain about the workspace. Now, the workspace I'm talking about is on the right, on the left of your machine, and in front of your machine. For example, let's say if it's, it'll be good to have slightly uh, a little bit of room to froth your milk on the right of your machine in front of your machine and over the other side of your machine which is the left of your machine if you are using a double group um, some baristas prefer to froth the milk at the side some prefer to froth the milk in front so by having a rough working space uh, roughly about half a feet to one feet um, you is very convenient for a lot of baristas not to mention having a workspace in front sufficient enough to put cups pitchers will be useful as well if you don't have working space in front you have no place to put your pitchers you don't have a place to put your milk you don't have a place to put uh, just about anything else so remember you need at least a little bit of working space that you can put you know, some cups some pitchers some milk and all that if you do not have enough space in front, try to have some space at the side so you can still place your pitchers, you can still place your cups, uh, your takeaway cups, your meal and all that at the side. So you need some working space. Next, I'd like to talk about distance. Um, for example, if I'm standing right here, if I open up the portal filter, the most optimum distance to your grinder will be a distance that I do not need to move. For example, if I take out the porta filter from here, I can just reach out my hand. And if there's a grinder next to me, it's really convenient to the barista. It speeds up a process of making coffee by a lot and reduce the chance of accidents. You do not want your barista to take out a really hot porta filter with boiling water inside running across the room. So you like to have the grinder nearby not too near because you still need some working space you want a grinder nearby to it you want a knock box which is nearby to it as well so you can take it out knock it which is nearby you do not want it to be across the room um, a good optimum place to have milk as well will be probably underneath the coffee machine so you can take out the milk pour the milk in your pitcher so it's really convenient Remember that the organization and the placement of your coffee machine will actually affect and impact how efficient your coffee making process will be. If it's across a room, it, well, you, you have problems eventually. Next up, I'd like to talk about cleaning. Uh, after, making a, a, well, after making a cup of coffee, you have used cups, 
pitcher filled with milk, and a lot of other stuff around. So you have a sink nearby, or a basin where you can you know, take your dirty pitcher, just shove it inside the sink, dirty used cups or shot glass, place inside the sink, it's more convenient to the barista and it increases the volume and the capacity and the speed of the barista making coffee as well. Goodbye and please subscribe. Goodbye and please subscribe. Bye bye. Bye bye.